Welcome to Totally Integrated Instrumentation. Today we're going to have a look at onboarding MindSphere um, assets. Uh, and when we talk about an asset, that is the actual hardware that it is on site um, collecting your data. So to start off with, we need to, to start the onboarding uh, procedure. And that is on the, the Asset Manager app. So select view your assets and then select where you want to create your um, connection. Okay, so here I have some assets already set up, but um, in the top section I'm going to set where I onboard it. So I create an asset. And then here you'll see, start to see all of the different options for, for connecting to hardware out in the field. In this example, we're going to connect to the MindConnect IoT 2040. Select that and click Create. And now you have to give it a name. And it's up to you. This, this name doesn't appear on Fleet Manager you can put location and, and, and whatever you want in there but I'm gonna leave it like this um, click Save and then you'll see this option down here so this connectivity this is where we need to um, uh, download our onboarding key as you can see on the right hand side this shows you the the label of the device that you would have have out in the field so you, you do need that information so for this particular device I can see that my serial number and then click Save um, we need to get this um, onboarded to start off with so if we click on the uh, the little settings button um, and then you can you can see down here your, your different connections so if you were connecting to a PLC with the second Ethernet port on the um, IOT 2040 then you can untick DHCP and put all your settings in there um, and again to keep things simple if you've got a DHCP server on your switch then you can just leave that set to DHCP and then click save in this example we're going to be retrieving data from an S7 1500 PLC that is utilizing the Citrans uh, library for TIA portal the MindConnect box, so the second port that's referred to as the process port, is going to be connected to this Ethernet port. So I need to make a, a, a note of my IP address for this because I need this to be sat on the same domain. So here we can see uh, 168.9.1. So um, when I program up my uh, MindConnect box, I'm going to use the address of 192.168.9.10 with the same subnet mask. Uh, now, other things that we need to, to look at, the way the MindConnect box communicates to the PLC is through a, a, a standard get put command. That's the way I'm going to be doing it in this example. So you just have to make sure that that's enabled. So if you go to your, your 1500 PLC and TIA portal, go to properties, protection and security and scroll down you'll see this option here permit access with put stroke get communication if you haven't got that selected then the mind connect box cannot talk to the PLC so if we go back to our uh, IOT 2040 so this is this is on MindSphere um, you can see here production interface or process interface I've unticked the DHCP, I've got an IP address of 9.10 and the subnet mask of 
Um, so I've left my mine connect um, uh, connection to MindSphere DHCP because that's going to be my router at home is going to assign it an IP address um, but this has to be has to stay fixed because it's a production interface so I'm going to save that and then I'm ready to download the onboarding key so there you can see your onboarding um, key this needs to be downloaded to a memory stick and then um, you insert that into the device and monitor this onboarding screen. As you can see, once you plug the, the USB memory stick um, into the uh, IoT2040, it will go through a, a sequence of lights, but when it's connected, you'll see the three green lights come on and if you go back to your asset um, you will see the online and onboarded functionality. Now that I've onboarded I'm not collecting any data yet I've just connected my uh, MindConnect box to this account but I can see here that my, my firmware is outdated so if I click on this little cog so once you've selected your country, you'll see down here that your new firmware revision. So just accept terms and condition and then update your firmware. Before I start mapping my data in, in MindSphere, um, we just need to make sure that our block that we're reading from, because you have to read from, from a data block, is non-optimized. So what do I mean by that? So if we have a look at this data block here, this is the um, one for the Coriolis meter, the FCT070 in the Citrans library. So if I open that up, you'll see here, if I go online, yeah, everything is working. I'm happy with that. I can see if I come down here, I can see my density, my mass flow. That's all fine. And there's my temperature. Um, but because the block is optimized I can't see my offset address so if I go to here I need to be able to select this offset address so what I've done is I've just created a little bit of code where I move the process values into to this data block here so move for my sphere there's my FC so if I right click this now and go to object properties you'll see on here that this block is not optimized so if I go to that block, I can see my offset address. So um, if I want to bring back my temperature, it's a real and it's DB10 um, and then I'm in address zero is my start address. So if I go back to my sphere, I've already set this up. So here you have a PLC. OK, so let's have um, a look at that first. So if I click on that, you can see here this is the IP address of the port that I'm connected to on my PLC, so um, 192.168.9.1, and I've got an update time of, of every minute. Um, if I want to, I can connect to, to multiple P PLCs, so I could add another, okay, um, and bring that data in as well. Or if I, if I wanted to, I might be doing some Modbus TCP via this, or a Modbus 485, I can do both. I don't. I'm not limited to to one connection. Um, once I've got my connection, I have to start putting in my data, and I've already put this temperature in. So let's have a look at what I've done here. So I hope it's. So if we go into edit mode. Um, I've given it a name. I have to give it some units, which is important for when we link, link it later on to uh, uh, aspects. And because it's a real, um, it's a double word. And then you, the way you address this, so DB10, um, then it's a DB real, and my start address is zero. And if I put that in, I have to make sure I've got my get put enabled and a non-optimized block. And you can see here, my my data is healthy and then if I go to fleet manager I can see my temperature coming into to fleet manager so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ha add my density 
just to, to show you how you can do it wrong. Um, so if I go back to here, my density starts off at address 4, and you can see here 968. It's a bit of um, uh, vodka and a little bit of water in there. So let's um, go and add that. So we're going to add a data point, and we'll call it... and this is in kilograms per meter cubed okay it's a double and the address is db10 dot db real 4 now that's the correct address and you can here do this on 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 data change i'm just going to get it logging all the time what i'm going to do is put that in wrong so i'm going to Give it an X, so that's just trying to bring back like the the, the data in its raw format, not a, an I triple E floating point. So there'll be a data mismatch. So so I should get an error. So if I accept that, save, and then apply changes. So now I can see that I have an error with this data point. And if I scroll down, I will see here type conversion has a problem because it's a real and I haven't told it it's a real. It, it just thinks it's um, a double word, so it can't make any sense of that. So if I go back to edit mode and change that X to a real, so it's now set to the right data type and save that. So I can see now that that is healthy. If you click on there, it will tell you the last time it updated. Um, so just, just make a note if you have got a fault of the last time it updated, um, make your changes and then make sure that that time is increased. Uh, if you've still got a fault, then, then you know the change you've made hasn't been successful. So what we're going to do now is map that data into MindSphere. So I've already uh, created uh, uh, an aspect. So if I go to my aspects, this is where it's storing the data. And under here, I will have the FCT ABV. So this is where you have to be careful because once you create this data storage point, it does come up and warn you, but you, you can't delete it. So we're going to add a variable. We're going to call it density and the units here have to match what you've got on the field agent so um, uh, we're in kilograms per meter cubed and it is a double and then we can save that i've already attached that to an asset type so if i go to my types here um, I, i've got one here and you can see there my FBV so it's already been linked if I wanted to I could add another so just to show you how you can do that you can edit and then under here I can browse my aspects and add multiple aspects to this one asset so I'll just cancel that and then um, I have my asset where it's um, uh, actually going to be um, uh, storing the data if that makes sense ready to be used in, in the app so under here I've already created this, so under sewer cert, um, I'll just put it under here for temporary, it's, it's called Kidderminster Sewage Treatment Works. I've mapped that, all I need to do now is link the data from a field agent into that storage location. So if I go back, you'll see my field agent here. So um, this is it, field agent IoT 2040. And then I need to go down to, to a Mind Connect box. So this is where I've been onboarding the device. You see my data is still OK. But then you come to this section that says View Data Maps. And you can see here my density isn't linked with anything. So I've got kilograms per meter cubed. So I need to link that variable. And I need to find my um, storage asset so if I come into here it's there it is on the Kidderminster sewage treatment work and then it will only allow me to, to link it to uh, compatible 
um, uh, variables. So here this is the one I've just set up. It's a double. The units are right. So if I had the, this typed in wrong, it wouldn't let me connect. So if I link that variable and click accept, now I'm ready to go to the visualization part. Here I have my um, data in the uh, uh, visualization tool that comes with your MySphere account called uh, uh, Fleet Manager. And you can see here my, my temperature. So um, that's been recording for a while now. And then if I just get rid of that and put my density on, you, you can see here there is my density. And to, to make sure that we are reading the right value, let's put both values on the screen at the same time. So, so here we have my density of 968, and I can see that is coming in at the same value. So there we have it. That's how to, to connect to Siemens PLC um, using a, a standard get put command to a mine connect box. So this is the same for a mine connect IoT 2040 and the mine connect nano. And it doesn't have to just be reels. It can be bytes. It can be words, integers, it can be double words. Really anything can be mapped from, from your, your PLC into Mindsphere. So that concludes this video. Thanks for listening. Again, your support is really well appreciated.